good morning uh, students uh, today we will continue our discussion on the modern physics experiments so what are the modern physics experiments that led to the uh, discovery of uh, quantum mechanics the beautiful subject of quantum mechanics and in the last class that we have discussed mainly uh, uh, the black body uh, radiation and uh, briefly couple of theories which uh, actually uh, which were found to be significant in terms of giving an explanation to the black body radiation right and then uh, only uh, the successful theory, theory was basically by the uh, max planck okay so the max planck's actually given a, a conclusive evidence uh, or he could explain the data only after uh, he uh, assuming that the you know the light is having corpuscular in nature that means it is having you know uh, corpuscular in nature uh, but of course he did not point out that but then he proposed the quantization concept so he was the man in fact proposed the quantization uh, of the you know the exchange between the radiation matter takes place in a quanta of energy in terms of quantas that is not any amount of energy cannot be uh, it's not possible to exchange so that is his uh, major uh, proposal or assumption uh, that assumption was successful in explaining all the experimental results with regard to the black body radiation irrespective of the metal okay irrespective of the metal body uh, for, uh, with which the black body was actually made up of okay so that was in the year 1900 and roughly around this time in november or december or so he has proposed that uh, concept and in fact a couple of uh, quantum mechanics uh, uh, researchers they would say even in fact that is the birth uh, that is the date of birth of the uh, quantum mechanics because uh, never before you know uh, the the 1900 uh, roughly about i think november or december or so so this type of uh, uh, concept was not there so therefore people many people later on much later when the subject was developed fully so when they go back and see where it started and what actually is the origin to develop uh, this particular concept they found that the bank uh, explanation to the black body was the beginning in, you know beginning of the quantum mechanics therefore in fact a couple of people will give that day, that day of uh, publishing that paper very good paper uh, was considered to be the date of birth of the quantum mechanics okay now <clears throat> just after five years just after five years of this thing you know uh, uh, einstein actually found something very interesting uh, in the theory of black body the radiation which was given by the Max Planck and uh, you know he is so sensible we come across nowadays people are publishing so many papers the number of people are publishing uh, you know uh, there are I know a couple of people who publish uh, who published more than uh, 2000 research papers in their entire career yeah we are discussing uh, about Einstein Einstein actually uh, did not publish many papers. Unlike the recent days, uh, we come across many researchers, a uh, <clears throat> lot of papers. Okay, many people publish. Uh, you know, in the entire career, minimum of uh, 100 to 200. So, if you take a typical uh, chemist uh, who is doing average science, so they will be doing that kind of. Uh, they will be publishing those those many papers. But Einstein actually published only five research papers, and five research papers are really uh, path breaking uh, theories that he has proposed and which are still debated and then people are trying to find the, the give the experimental truth for each and everything and one paper was actually the uh, relativity relativity and special relativity okay there are one paper the other paper was actually the photo electric effect he, he has given a nice explanation inspired from the max planck uh, uh, black body radiation theory so he has given a nice explanation uh, which was actually later on successfully all his theory or assumption whatever he proposed in the photoelectric uh, theory that was actually uh, proved therefore it was very successful 
the another theory what he gave that we will discuss also that is the molar heat capacities that also we will discuss as a part of this one three and then there are two more papers that he has published about space understanding the space he has published something okay so uh, his uh, contribution to the science was so phenomenal and uh, uh, it is an eye opener and people never thought that he's well known to the entire science community as a good uh, imaginary person you know? you know his imagination is such that it is accurate it is accurate that is where he is uh, so special among all the uh, science researcher that uh, we have produced the human kind or mankind produced so far so let us go to the photoelectric effect what exactly it is and what is the explanation given by the einstein very briefly i think all of you know very well the uh, uh, the photoelectric electric effort then whenever we come across photoelectric effort we jump into the conclusion that einstein that is true that einstein actually gave the explanation but uh, what is not known to majority of the community or the students is that hertz you know we use the frequency we represent in terms of uh, one unit that is hertz right and then some people write it earlier it's like a cycles per second so okay right so that is also there but then the most uh, appropriate and then si unit for frequency is the hertz so hertz is actually a person right so he was the person discovered the phenomena of uh, the photoelectric effect so what is this effect it is well known that the when you shine uh, light onto the metal surfaces the metal surfaces actually eject the electron basically gives the electrons so that was the phenomena uh, discovered by the hertz and then why this is happening why light you know is giving uh, is giving is ejecting electron from the metal surface uh, is not understood initially but later on people came up okay so as i told you in the black body radiation uh, discussion also whenever we observe a, an experiment okay whenever we have an experimental result we try to give you know we to try to give what is the explanation for this so therefore in the similar line uh, people try to many people try to give some kind of explanations okay at the same time parallelly many people try to do some kind of that more and more experiments uh, which actually uh, will help will help us to understand in a better way okay so people ask questions so this is the fundamental phenomena so is it a true this photoelectric effect is true for only uh, this type of uh, only iron metal is it applicable for the tungsten is it applicable for the other metals so these are the question people ask okay hertz has found something so can i uh, can i do the experiment with regard to some other atom, uh, metal atom and see whether this effect is true or not so this type of uh, experimental experiments are parallelly going on at the same time there are several people came up trying to give the explanation okay before going to those all theories i may not go to the all the theory but i will just briefly give you a few observations experimental observations and later on i will give the explanation of einstein the first one, uh, one observation is that if the frequency of the incident radiation is smaller than the metal threshold frequency okay and there will not be any ejection of the electron from the metal surface irrespective of its intensity so this was uh, the observation of one scientist the philip linard okay this was the one observation the frequency of the incident radiation is smaller than the some threshold frequency okay then you don't see any ejection of the electrons from the metal surface even though you are using very high intensity radiation okay on the other hand even though if the intensity of the radiation is smaller than the uh, threshold uh, then uh, even though if it is uh, even though the intensity is small if the radiation frequency is above the threshold frequency and there will be instantaneously there will be ejection of electrons okay so that is the second point and uh, <clears throat> above the threshold frequency the number of electron ejected increases with the intensity of the radiation but does not depend upon the light frequency 
This is another point. So above the threshold frequency, right? So you have a cutoff uh, threshold frequency, and if you are using uh, a frequency, uh, if you are using the radiation of above the radi uh, threshold frequency, and uh, it is actually giving a lot of electrons, okay? And no matter what kind of frequency of the radiation that you are using, okay? Then the kinetics, the kinetic energy of the ejected electron, okay? So obviously, since the ejection of the electron depends upon the frequency, so subsequently we can also assume another point that was discovered is that the kinetic energy of the ejected electron depends upon the frequency but not on the intensity of the beam okay and the kinetic energy of the ejected electron increases linearly with the incident frequency okay when you're trying to plot the kinetic energy versus the kinetic energy on the sorry the frequency on the x-axis and kinetic energy on the y-axis if you are trying to plot then you know above the crush you know, you, there is a linear dependence okay linearly it is increasing and uh, that is not starting with the origin but it will start on the x-axis some point okay so that point what we call it as a threshold frequency and uh, uh, this these observations are something different uh, uh, as far as the classical physics is concerned why right? because uh, the classical according to the classical physics so the frequency can be any number the frequency can be any number. You can start with uh, one, two, three, four, and uh, you can have you can have even a fraction also. Therefore, uh, the exchange, energy exchange with the matter and radiation can take place in principle in any amount. Okay. Suppose uh, uh, if and moreover, uh, the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation proportional to the square of the amplitude. Okay. Now. According to the classical physics at that time, people are thinking that, okay, suppose if I am giving, suppose if I am giving a, uh, applying a radiation which is a less intense one, then what should happen that uh, the metal should accumulate, basically all the, uh, accumulate the energy and then accumulate, 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 accumulate when it is reached a sufficient intensity then immediately the electron should uh, eject from the metal surface that was the concept as per the classical physics okay if it is sufficiently intense one i mean if the radiation is sufficiently uh, more intense one then it should instantaneously give that is indeed the case there is nothing much but then what is important is that of course uh, again there also the frequency should be some kind of threshold frequency. The, the frequency of the radiation must be above the threshold frequency. But when you look at the low, when you are using the low frequency, low intensity radiation, okay, then according to the uh, this one, then it should accumulate, 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 and then finally it should eject. But it was not the case. What is observed is that even though the light intensity is small. But if its frequency is above the uh, threshold frequency, so instantly it will uh, eject the electrons. So this concept could not be understood. According to the physics laws, this concept, the dependence of uh, the ejection of the electrons and their kinetic energy, okay, the, uh, everything is dependent on the frequency, not on the intensity. According to the classical physics, the intensity is the square of the amplitude. Therefore, that light, if you are using a sufficiently more intense one, it should do all sorts of things. It should immediately you know, eject the electron. So that was the concept. Well, this is the, uh, the diagram. Uh, I could have kept in the previous uh, place. Anyway, you know this very well, that you have a metal surface, and when you shine light with the frequency, then it will uh, give some kind of thing. Anyway, this is the Einstein explanation. I will come to that. But the observation is something like this. Uh, the observation experimental results actually is this. So uh, when you try to plot the frequency versus kinetic energy, K stands for kinetic energy, U stands for the frequency. And this is where it is. So it is linearly increasing. The kinetic energy, if you are plotting, just after the, if you are using the frequency, which is above than the U0, then the ejection of electron is instantaneous and then there is a linear dependence. So it increases the frequency and the kinetic energy is also increasing. 
okay and but below this okay if you are using the frequency less than mu zero nothing uh, is up no ejection of the electrons so these things you know uh, it found uh, it was not very clear at that time but uh, only the einstein has given uh, very uh, conclusive results so here's the major drawbacks in the according to the classical physics okay before the einstein theory was actually is this gradual accumulation continuous absorption of energy by electron okay so these are actually found to be not so correct okay so and based on this uh, we cannot explain the uh, the photoelectric effect okay and uh, einstein actually came up with this concept okay so this concept is okay uh, as I told you that he inspired from the Max Planck concept of the quantization and he took one step uh, ahead and then said that, okay, uh, the quantization, if it is true and if he could successfully explain the black body radiation, then there should be something beyond that. The light should be actually, uh, uh, is made up of particle. Okay. Uh, I mean, if that is true, then uh, it cannot have any amount of energy, so there will be a limited amount of energy. So then what he has said that, okay, uh, a photon which is incidenting upon a metal surface, it will have a energy of H nu, okay, and this H nu energy, uh, when, is, when it is uh, uh, striking on the metal surface, on the metal surface, we know that the electrons are, we have free of electrons or C of electrons are there, moving freely so when they see these electrons uh, whatever the energy it is having it transferred its uh, h new energy to the electrons and the electrons if it find you know if it's a if it's a frequency is okay is uh, matching with this energy then there will be a ejection of electrons if it is not so then there is nothing can be absorbed okay and only if it's energy above than this then then we will see the ejection of electrons okay the incident energy basically the light is carrying this much this amount of energy we propose the concept of photon uh, so light is composed of uh, uh, corpuscles and then uh, uh, which are also called as a photon and this photon energy is very very precise and uh, it is actually h nu okay and this h nu amount of energy it is carrying and then it is whenever it sees a metal surface and then the electrons in the metal surface this amount will be translated to the electrons suppose if this amount of energy is above than the electrons which are already uh, bonded in the metal surface then there's the electrons actually basically absorb this energy and then there is a ejection of electrons and if that is not so then then we cannot see any kind of electron ejection Okay, so he was very successful, and that, and then he, uh, yeah, so he proposed this one. So only when the photon energy is above the uh, uh, threshold frequency, which he called as a work function of the metal, above this part, uh, particular, if the energy of the photon is above the which new. Uh, uh, Above the work function of the metal surface, then we can we can see ejection of the electrons. Okay, otherwise we cannot see. And therefore, uh, if the energy, so ultimately the energy which is given to the metal surface is uh, utilized in two parts. One is utilized to uh, basically uh, to cut off from the metal surface, and also the additional amount naturally it will be utilized uh, that in terms of uh, utilized by the, uh, the electron and then it will eject with some kind of kinetic energy. Therefore, the uh, the amount of energy, photon energy, which, which is received with the metal is utilizing in two ways. One is just to uh, uh, cut off from the surface, okay? Uh, there is some, uh, that the cutoff frequency is something that it actually depends upon the metal quality and metal and it is in intrinsic property of uh, metals. So uh, if you are using a different one, it will have the work function or the cutoff frequency will be different, okay? So this is that factor. And the remaining thing uh, is taken by the electron and then it is ejecting with some kinetic energy. 
So uh, H and U, whatever you are giving, it is basically two parts, work function plus kinetic energy. And then later, he has given a simple uh, derivation also uh, for the kinetic energy. And he has proposed um, this equation, the kinetic energy, okay, the kinetic energy is equal to, of course, you can read and rearrange this uh, equation H nu is equal to W plus K, and then K is equal to H nu minus W, where W is nothing but the, uh, the new, new zero by H, okay? So where new zero is the incident uh, uh, initial frequency or the cutoff frequency of uh, metal. So it depends upon the metal and it is inter intrinsic property. Each metal will have its own threshold frequency or cutoff frequency. Now, this equation, very simple equation, also explains why there is no ejection of electrons. If it's a, if it is less than, uh, 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 if the incident frequency is less than U0. Okay, why? Because you can see here from the kinetic energy, this is a kinetic energy expression. You can rearrange and write it like H multiplied by H0 minus U0. Okay, and the U0 is a cutoff frequency. So, okay. And the new is the frequency, incident frequency of the light. Now suppose if uh, this is small, if new is small, if new is small, then basically it is a subtraction, right? If this quantity is high, only then it will be positive. Otherwise, it will be negative, right? Right? Suppose if new is less than new zero, then the kinetic energy is going to be negative. But kinetic energy never be a negative, right? It is a positive quantity. Energy is a positive quantity. Therefore, uh, from this, it is very, uh, uh, very clear that the unless you, you are, uh, unless you provide sufficient uh, frequency of radiation, the metal will not eject, eject the, the electrons. So that is understood from this uh, explanation. Right. And later on, of course, there are many people uh, came up and then tried to uh, seek the reality of uh, and try to give much more clear evidences uh, in terms of experiments. OK. And as I told you that it is a continuous process. Theory and experiment is a continuous process. OK. Now, Millikan came in 1905. He has given, sorry, Alistair came in 1905 and gave some kind of explanation. And that explanation has to be again tested, right? It cannot be, you know, uh, it is simply that he has explained, right? Any theory is only validated through the experiment. As long as it is not validated with the experimental results or um, the observations, the it cannot be uh, accepted as a uh, theory, right? So Einstein theory for some time, it was debated and then discussed and then many people try to disprove and at the same time many people try to prove with their experimental results and only in the year 1960 millikan we all know millikan very well millikan came very uh, came up and then he has given very systematic evidences and systematic experimental data he has collected uh, from different variety of metal surfaces and what are all the assumptions that he made, the Einstein has made, everything is, uh, he has proved that it is correct. Okay? Right. And then, in fact, Millikan also found, very interestingly, the Planck constant. I mean, you can just uh, write down all the small, small like, uh, expressions. So, uh, this is the... Vs. Vs is the stopping. Uh, Vs is the stopping potential in the experiment. This is given to be uh, h h by e multiplied by nu minus h by e multiplied by h nu. Okay, it is. Uh, I mean, the kinetic energy is nothing but the charge multiplied by the applied potential. That is one expression. So. The kinetic energy expression in the previous slide I have given, right? Here, this is like this. So the K is equal to H, uh, H multiplied by nu minus nu zero, right? Now, what I'm saying that this kinetic energy, that kinetic energy is, we know that half mv square, that is one expression. But the other expression in terms of, uh, in the experiment, what we do, uh, how to measure the kinetic energy. So we apply different potential and in the experiment. So therefore, the kinetic energy also can be 
uh, written as this one e multiplied by stopping potential okay and this e when you take to the other side it becomes h by e mu minus h by e mu zero right so this is a simple expression that he has given now the millikan what he has done he tried to prove this relation for different metal surfaces okay he tried to prove this and in all the cases he was very successful in explaining everything experimental results are inconsistent with the einstein theory and he also did little more than that so when he is trying to plot uh, the graph you know y is equal to this expression this is of the form y is equal to mx plus c y is equal to mx plus c so m is the what this is the intercept and then m is the, the slope h by v intercept is basically this entire quantity this is a constant basically right from this slope he tried to ex, uh, get the uh, the planck constant which was given uh, which was uh, uh, derived by the planck max planck right and this max planck constant was found to be almost matching with the planck constant which is given in the year 1900 okay just imagine that you know the story you try to go back and see the black body radiation for a planck he has given yes for the first time he has found that the this expression that the energy distribution in the previous class i have given he was successful only when he assign a value h value as 6.625 into 10 raised to minus uh, that value 34 regime second okay he could successfully explain only when he assign h value as that one therefore he introduced as a constant okay that was the story but millikan he was trying to explain the assumptions or theory of the einstein and in the einstein theory he found there is a planck constant and he tried to calculate from his experimental data he tried to estimate the planck constant and he surprisingly the planck constant what he actually got from the uh, photoelectric effect uh, the experimental data is uh, almost matching and in fact if you want you know this is 0.5 percentage error limit he could successfully get the planck constant which is given by that planck just imagine that somebody did some experiment and he proposed something and this is entire ex different different experiment but he was also very successfully obtained as value which is already given by somebody else so this is something very unique you know uh, the theory uh, the uh, the max max planck constant it became such a uh, uh, successful constant why because that it is well proved it is nicely proved by different uh, uh, scientists okay so therefore it was given very nice uh, it was very much appreciated and then in fact that is the smallest quantity that is planck constant is the smallest quantity that anybody can uh, think of so uh, that is really nice so that's all about the einstein theory so einstein said that okay light is uh, to the takeover message from the photoelectric effect okay uh, briefly there are certain assumptions and uh, uh, experimental results before 1905 starting from 1887 to 1905 before the einstein theory there are several assumptions there are uh, several experimental data uh, with regard to the photoelectric effect and broadly all the things are actually related with the frequency people are puzzled with the frequency why there is a frequency dependence on the kinetic energy that nobody has no clue okay but einstein came in 1905 he has given nice uh, theory he assumed that the light is made up of uh, corpuscles and he also called it as a, it is a photon and then there is a amount of the photon will have h new energy so the when it is the radiation when it is hitting the metal surface that energy is transferred to the electron and then only if that electron the electron is already binded with the metal surface right and therefore to eject that one unless you provide the energy which is already you know the binding energy of the metal surface then it cannot eject okay 
and then he was successful. Later again, the Einstein theory was successfully explained in terms of experiments by Millikan. Okay, so that was the uh, a brief uh, story about the photoelectric effect. And in the year 1923, again, this another phenomena was observed, and that was also very interesting. The Compton effect. Compton came up, and then he has given very conclusive evidence for the corpuscle car uh, car nature of the radiation. The particle nature of the radiation was actually proved. Uh, direct evidence was this, this is I would say it is the direct evidence. Direct evidence is given by uh, is proved from the Compton effect. Okay, Compton effect is actually a scattering effect, a, a, a scattering experiment. Okay, so you know what is this experiment? This experiment is very simple. That you know you have some metal foils and then metal foils are when you shine very high, high uh, uh, energetic radiation like x-rays for example okay the experiment is very simple you have a metal foils typically gold or silver foils they have taken and then they are shining x-rays onto that okay okay and then now uh, basically you have a, a, a electrons are basically ejected electrons are basically ejected right and these ejected electrons are uh, sorry not ejected basically scattered Okay, and the uh, the scattered photons they were trying to observe. Okay, you shine the X-rays on the metal surface, and the scattered you have a uh, absorption and scattering. Okay, so refraction. So these are different phenomena when you shine light on, uh, and light is interacting with the matter. Okay, absorption, refraction, diffraction. These are all the properties of light, right? So uh, this uh, Compton was very much interested in the scattered light. Okay, he was only in interested in scattered light, and he was observing the scattered light. And uh, when he uh, tried to plot the graph, okay, the scattered light he has collected, and he's trying to plot. Okay, so his experiment is this: so he is shining light with some kind of uh, high energetic uh, radiation. Typically, X-rays are basically shined down to the uh, uh, incident upon uh, this particular uh, metals and metal foils, especially. And then the metal uh, doing so, so many things, but then he is only particularly interested in the scattering, scattering phenomena. Okay, and uh, he was trying to collect all the scattered light, and then he was trying to plot a graph, intensity versus, uh, yeah. The, this is the intensity, the lambda versus intensity. What is the wavelength of the scattered photons and what is its intensity? So when he's trying to plot, uh, actually it depends upon the angle. As you know, so the scattering actually depends upon the angle. And uh, at different angles he was doing experiment, but at a given angle, uh, he has observed there are two peaks. He has observed two peaks. One is, one is lambda zero at lambda zero. This is the position at which we have found the maximum. There is another intense absorption. Uh, there is another maximum at this region, right? So there are two things that he has observed. Okay, one is at lambda zero. Lambda zero is nothing but the incident radiation wavelength. Okay, lambda is the a new wavelength that he has found. Whose intensity is much more than the incident uh, radiation wavelength. Okay, incident initially we are giving, we are using the lambda zero is the wavelength of the X rays. Okay, X rays we are shining. Now the scattering photons when you try to observe the incident radiation uh, we have incident radiation, but along with that. You do have another radiation. That radiation uh, wavelength is much higher than the. This is higher, right? So wavelength is increasing in the direction, and the another radiation intensity is found to be much higher than the uh, the other one. So that is the experiment. Now the thing is that how to explain this? Okay, again, uh, this was again. Uh, uh, explained by 
using the same concept of the corpuscular nature of the particle and corpuscular nature of the radiation okay and uh, when you have yeah so when you incident uh, the x-rays so whose energy is h nu okay and it behaves like a one particle and then the, the metal surface you have electrons right so the electrons receive this one and then uh, uh, they basically is scattered and then there are many things and then by using the energy conservation momentum conservation laws you could successfully explain this particular uh, he actually derived this expression what is that lambda or the, the delta or some people write it in a delta that is the shift in the wavelength that you know lambda minus you can also write that way lambda minus lambda zero is what we call it as a delta lambda okay yeah so lambda minus lambda zero is, is you can also write this way is nothing but the delta lambda of course in that case this will not be here so the, you can find the, the expression in this this type of form in many textbooks also but everything is same okay there is a shift in the wavelength after the when you are uh, when you are monitoring the scattered photons okay the shift in the this thing the shift in this uh, the scattered photon uh, wavelength the shift actually depends upon the angle actually depends upon the angle so what do you mean by angle if it is a wave if the radiation uh, is a wave wave is everywhere it's like a ripple it's like a ripple on the water how it actually propagates does it confine to only one particular direction no the moment there is a disturbance the wave actually propagates in all directions in the space right and if it is a wave then there should not be any angle dependence right but in the derivation part what you observe is that there is a angle dependence that means the radiation actually having the particle nature therefore that angle dependence was actually uh, is there in the expression okay so he was very successful in explaining this uh, uh, this particular wavelength shift okay then the next one anyway i am not going to the derivation part because that is beyond the scope of our uh, uh, subject i just want to give you the story you know how these things actually over the year uh, over uh, 25 years or 30 years how this was actually uh, developed right that is the purpose so you know, those who are interested you can find this uh, my discussion in most of the physics uh, bsa textbook also uh, bsc what i uh, what i have studied is uh, uh, three major i have uh, physics chemistry mass and in the physics uh, finally here we used to study all these things okay we have uh, two papers uh, two physics papers two chemistry majors and uh, and mathematics two papers in the of course uh, we do have practicals but theory papers i'm saying two two papers uh, each one we will be there in the third uh, third year so i have read in my bsc itself all these things the next text well, the conclusive evidence of the corpuscular nature of the radiation uh, is from the molar heat capacities okay molar heat capacities so what is the molar heat capacity i think you have already studied right so what do you mean by heat capacity can anybody answer what is the heat capacity how do you define heat capacity so uh, the amount of heat uh we uh, require to give to a substance to raise its temperature by one degree. Mm. We call it molar heat capacity. How do you calculate? Ex uh, is there any expression for that? Uh, C is equal to Q by T. Can I say like this? Heat capacity is defined to be change in 
internal energy with respect to temperature at constant volume can i say like that ha ah, yes sir okay so this is the definition uh, according to the thermodynamics the heat capacity is the change in the change in internal energy with respect to temperature at constant volume right so this is the definition of heat capacity so in the year uh, i mean at the early 19th century there are two persons dulong and petit probably you have uh, studied about these people in the thermodynamics or thermochemistry and well known scientists and uh, that is the definition that was given so and uh, they were work working on uh, different uh, metals uh, metals uh, heat capacities especially mono atomic solids mono atomic solids can i can you anybody can anybody name what are the mono atomic solids can anybody name what are the mono atomic solids we have any metals where do you find metals in the periodic table ayyo lady part to the left side and the middle then group 1 group 2 potassium is a metal yes 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 sodium lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium these are all metals am i right these are yes, mono atomic yes. okay diatomic mono atomic that means only one atom will be there you don't have anything so these are solids and then you will have only one atom so that is why the name came like mono atomic solids and people are working on the molar heat capacity of mono atomic solids okay and the molar heat capacity is actually they found it is approximately 25 joules per kelvin per mole the molar heat capacity of the uh, mono atomic solids is found to be roughly 25 uh, joules per kelvin per mole i think this actually this number uh, anybody can derive this number okay how to derive the molar heat capacity of mono atomic solids well we have uh, thermo dynamics okay so from the equal partition principle okay if if it is one atom it is just oscillate right it makes vibration so if it is having if you leave it if you leave the atoms or any matter in the in the in a particular system okay and it will possess an amount of energy kt that is kt what we call it as a uh, thermal energy the thermal the any system even we also will have a kt k is the boltzmann constant t is the temperature so any system if you are keeping at a temperature t so it will have kt thermal energy okay so the thermal energy of mono atomic solids will be kt okay that uh, that is the basis uh, we can start and then we can uh, find out the molar heat capacity so each atom since it is a mono atom and it will die basically oscillate in three different uh, dimensions in the space isn't it therefore uh, in that case it will the total energy of the mono atomic solid it is going to be uh, 3n kt why i said 3n why i said 3n because okay i have atom atom can move x axis y axis and then z axis right and if you have n number of atoms right if i have n number of atoms then naturally i will have 3n right so 3n is the total uh, number of atoms and then vibrating in three different uh, dimensions and the total thermal energy that the mono atomic solid can have uh, thermal energy not thermal energy total internal energy 
that the monoatomic solids can have is the uh, 3n kt 3n kt so where n is the total number of atoms right avogadro number of atoms you can say and again we know that n uh, the avogadro number multiplied by boltzmann constant we represent with the uh, the universal constant uh, gaseous constant r therefore the expression what we get is the internal energy is going to be 3r 3r i hope i made my point right you have one atom it is oscillating in three different dimensions therefore the average of the atom is actually 3 kt okay one atom is moving in three different directions if it is moving x axis y axis z axis right three three are there right so that atom will have uh, 3 kt energy and it is not one atom it is avogadro number of atoms are there therefore the total internal energy that the monoatomic solids can possess is the 3 nkt now the total internal energy of the monoatomic solids okay it is going to be 3 nkt but nkt is nothing but the 3rt okay okay so this is the internal energy but according to the definition of molar uh, heat capacity is so it is defined to be the the change in internal energy at constant temperature so uh, with respect to temperature at constant volume so if you do that if you apply that the molar heat capacity is going to be this one it is going to be 3r because there is one t but then down there is a the derivation right therefore naturally the tt cancel out then it becomes the 3r what is r r is 8 point something right so from that number it is estimated that uh, uh, 3r 3 into 8.4 or 8.42 something like that. when you estimate when you try to multiply then you will get approximately 25 joule, uh, joules per kelvin per mole okay so this actually value was proposed by julian and petit for mono atomic solids this is the molar heat capacities on an average they will have the heat capacities now when you try to plot a graph okay let me plot a small graph to understand this so whatever the molar atomic solid that it may be and if you try to plot the the heat capacities with respect to temperature it is going to be basically a constant so you can take on x axis the temperature and y axis uh, this quantity heat capacity when you plot it oh i am really sorry then it is going to be what it is going to be a straight line so it is going to be a straight line right this is t and this is c v yeah okay so this is the graph so irrespective of the temperature all the monoatomic solids actually they show very constant behavior the constant behavior is actually is this what is this constant behavior with respect to the nature of the metal uh, the monoatomic solid actually all of them will show 25 approximately 25 joules per mole per kelvin this is the amount now later on what happens if not working on the the same metal uh, monoatomic solids but Uh, but at different temperatures what are those temperatures initially initially people don't have very much access to go to low temperature initially uh, i mean the older days uh, people don't have much technology to lower the temperature of a system and to do experiment and, and uh, to find out the observations but later on as the technology is increased the people came up with some development of devar flask which actually lowers the temperature right the technology is improved and accordingly people started working 
with the experiments even at the low temperature when they are doing that those experiments when you when the when people try to estimate the molar heat capacities at low temperature that means below 0 degree kelvin right then people found something interesting what is that actually it is decreasing rapidly and then it is going to even zero also understand the mono atomic solids what dulang and petit actually predicted they are not actually processing the 25 joules per kelvin per mole en uh, energy but in fact actually at low temperatures this behavior above the room temperature this behavior is absolutely fine nothing nothing much deviation okay it is within the limits but then as they are as they the system's temperature is lowered lowered and then when they are going uh, lowering the temperature actually it is decreasing and then in fact it is going and reaching even the uh, uh, it is glowing to almost zero right just just oh, now it, it's gone anyway i think i will show this this graph uh this is almost the same thing but uh, the notation is different okay so this is the behavior i'm saying that it it is almost uh, reaching the zero also so that was the problem that was the problem in the uh, with regard to the molar heat capacity of the monoatomic solids now who will give how how to understand this behavior why there is a deviation what is that uh, Room, uh, room temperature and above, it is a constant. So one minute. Hello. Ah. Uh. Can you hear me? I am in the classroom. hello so now again to understand this behavior why there is a deviation in the low temperature then again many theories have come up but only einstein could actually give a, a better explanation okay he has uh, um, used the similar concept and then he has given very nice explanation for this uh, um, molar heat capacities experimental results okay and uh, what he showed majorly is that the you no know, more atomic solids uh, they actually behave like oscillators so he assumed that the mono atoms are like a harmonic oscillator they oscillate right and then their energy is quantized what he assumed that their energy is quantized and uh, they will have amount of energy uh, nh you know, where n is the uh, integer where n is the integer so they cannot have any amount of energy other than this n h mu so it can be h mu 1 h mu 2 h mu 3 h mu and so on so that was the major hypothesis of his uh, theory and then he gave an expression what we call as a einstein formula for molar heat capacity which is actually uh, given in this okay molar heat capacity that is the original definition now it is nothing but the Three capital R multiplied by f of e t, f of e t. Okay, so this is the formula where f of e is uh, is derived uh, is defined to be according to the Einstein uh, theory. This is defined to be like this: theta e divided by uh, t to the power uh, basically square square of this factor, and also you have exponential factor. Okay, this is the Einstein formula for molar heat capacity. So this actually explanation was very successful in in understanding and explaining the observation, experimental observation. What is the observation? The observation is that okay at room temperature and that it's okay. It is a constant behavior. Everything is same. But then in the low temperature, so we don't have a proper explanation, and in fact, it is almost nearing to the zero also. Why is it so? Okay, so that basically explanation, that experimental graph has to be properly explained. Okay, now it's not that the Dulang has predicted something. You know, we can't accept their theory is okay, 
up to the room temperature and above, but not at the low temperature. So therefore, we need to have a unified theory that explains uh, the all the results. Therefore, the Einstein um, uh, formula is found to be very much good. And in this expression, the theta E is called as a temperature, Einstein temperature, uh, which is defined to be the H nu divided by K. H nu divided by K, where K is the algebra number, nu is the frequency. On the two, as I mentioned that the key issue with the atoms actually oscillate and whose frequency is H nu, right? So that is the basic hypothesis of this theory. And uh, this Einstein temperature, that theta is high means basically you have higher frequency from the atoms. Okay, that happens at the high temperatures. Of course, as the, the temperature lowers, then it will go to, uh, it will behave differently. Okay, at high temperatures, so in this formula, okay, in this expression, you can see here, this is the Einstein formula. And there, uh, you can uh, impose two conditions. One is at a high temperature, okay, and the other one at the low temperature. At high temperature, where that high temperature means that the capital T is much higher than the Einstein temperature. Please remember that Einstein temperature is nothing but H nu by K. If this is, if T is much greater than this one, then F of uh, T is equal to 1. You can just plug in that, okay? If T is much greater than the F of, uh, than the Einstein temperature, then what happens? Here, what will happen? How this is becoming uh, one, this function, the total function becomes one. How this is happening? Can anybody say? In theta, e raised to exponential form, hmm. uh, the denominator becomes very big. Yeah, uh, very big. So the not expansion theta. becomes one. No, 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 not denominator. Actually here, then this one, you can actually, if theta is much higher, then actually there is one, right? This. Okay, there is one, it is in the denominator, therefore the total factor becomes small. If that factor becomes small, then you can expand that. Okay, you can expand that to the first, only up to the first term, the remaining thing will be cancelled out. Okay, and this actually totally cancelled out. So please work out uh, from my instructions, note down this and then please work out. This function, not the entire function, basically the entire f of t becomes uh, basically one. Please work out and uh, use this formula. So if theta is much higher, then you expand it. You expand the terms and you expand this also. And then both uh, will cancel uh, from some terms here, some and then here theta e by t. So both things actually cancel out and this total thing will become one. Okay, if this is one, then what is there, what is left over is 3R. This is exactly uh, uh, matching with the Dulong observations or predictions. So at high, high temperature, Einstein formula, whatever he derived, it is nicely explained. That is taken care of. But that is not so interesting. What is interesting at the low temperature explanation. At low temperature, when theta E, theta, sorry, when temperature is smaller than the theta E, Einstein temperature, there is another condition that we can impose. When you impose that, the f of e, f of t is equal to theta e by t uh, square multiplied by e raised to minus theta e by t. You can see here. You can see here. So it is not a, a linear behavior. This is no longer a linear behavior. Here, in that case, at low temperature, 3R multiplied by this. In that case, at low temperature, the molar heat capacities is going to be 3R multiplied by this. Okay? This 3R multiplied by theta E by T whole square multiplied by E raised to theta E by T. Now, in this expression, please recall, uh, this is a... There are two functions. If theta is small, okay, sorry, if T is small, what happened to this function, this particular function? Just look at theta e by t, okay? Now I'm saying theta is small. If theta is small, if it is something, if some quantity in the denominator is small, what will happen to the total value? 
it becomes higher right it becomes higher the total value becomes uh, higher suppose 1 by uh, 2 1 by 1 1 by uh, 0.5 1 by 0 0.2 which one is good which one is higher naturally 1 by 0, uh, 0 0.1 right right so if if you have 1 by uh, 1 and if you have 1 by uh, 2 and if you have 1 by 0 0.5 okay so which one will be higher 1.0.5 yeah exactly. 1 by 0 .5. exactly so this actually as the as you decrease the temperature 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 lower and lower and lower then this quantity is going basically increasing right does it explain the uh, graph does it explain the graph what is the graph graph is this okay uh, no does it explain no it is instead of increasing actually it is increasing but uh, this is the effect of only this particular thing but then there is another function which is very strong even though this function is increasing this exponential function is much decreasing much it is decreasing well Correct. So this exponentially it is decaying. By the time this function actually increase the this one, this because of this one, the total function actually comes to smaller and smaller. So that is the beautiful beauty of this particular Einstein formula. Okay, understood. So uh, as I told you that this Einstein theory was very successful in. Uh, understanding the molar heat capacities at low temperatures and not only that at high temperature also uh, it was very much uh, successful and then it will show very nice uh, constant value but of course einstein theory uh, to einstein theory some of the observations or modifications are proposed by debye of course uh, those things are beyond the scope of our uh, discussion so that's all about the einstein theory so the point I that you would like you have to remember is that Einstein again he assumed the quantization principle and the quantization principle is something that actually was successful in explaining an experimental result which is entirely different than the some other thing which is entirely different than the previous experimental thing, other experiments okay so that is the point you make it Quantization is something very important, and the same quantization actually also was uh, uh, very much successful uh, <clears throat> in spectroscopy. The quantization, especially in the atomic spectroscopy, uh, I think I need not to give much explanation for this atomic spectroscopy, especially you know the Rydberg uh, formula, right? I mean, this uh, formula, you know, right? So, atomic hydrogen. What is it basically atomic spectra? Atomic spectra is nothing but okay when you shine light on the atoms and it is well, well uh, developed and well known uh, that the elements, atoms actually, they have a characteristic uh, emissions. When you are heating, they have a characteristic uh, emissions of light, which are very unique. So why they are giving only that particular light? Why not some other light? Okay, just take a barium that you might have used in the Deepavali Diwali time. Uh, barium shows some green color. Magnesium shows some different color. Sodium shows some yellow color. Why they are very specific to that particular wavelength of light? It is mainly because the energy quantization, which was actually uh, proposed by, uh, which, which was nicely explained by the Niels Bohr, and the quantization, right? The quantization E is equal to delta E is equal to H mu. The energy difference when it is exactly matching with the incident uh, photon then there is a absorption and at the same time that uh, if it is already in the ground state the, the energy difference if it is in the already in the excited state then when it is coming back to the ground state it will emit uh, uh, the photon which is exactly matching whose energy is going to match with the energy difference right so the absorption and emission process uh, are well understood in those days and <clears throat> From that, we can make out the quantization principle is in fact it is true. Okay, the spectroscopy 
a uh, lot of spectroscopic techniques actually slowly developed and then all these spectroscopic uh, data uh, proves that the energy is quantized the energy is quantized i think uh, the hydrogen atom we have lyman series lyman bomber fashion bracket fund so there are different types of lines you know they have observed at one region something at one region another series of lines at another region there are series of lines i mean those the series of lines what we call it as a lyman series bomber series fashion bracket and fund okay lyman series hydrogen atom you know uh, the lyman series the spectral lines can be observed in the visible region the other things are actually in the different region but lyman series are actually uh, comes and uh, within the visible region and the rydberg uh, rydberg formula is very nice and you can expect some kind of problems uh, from this you just uh, try to uh, recall your previous knowledge r h is equal to 1 over l square minus 1 over n2 square okay so where uh, the r h is nothing but the rydberg constant that is 109680 centimeter inverse so this is a nice a formula which was derived and then this explains all the hydrogen atom atomic spectral lines okay so atomic spectra gave a conclusive evidence of quantization what is a quantization the energy is quantized why we are saying energy is quantized because in the experiment in the experiment a specific atom gives a specific emission of light it is well understood okay so that means they have a uh, energy that energy gap only it is absorbed either absorbed or dissipated and accordingly we will see the changes in the spectral line right so this actually bore quantization principle uh, nicely explains the most of the atomic spectra okay so another uh, important uh, thing you know uh, is a pair production pair production what is pair production the pair production is nothing but a pair pair means two right so uh, two are produced from where from where it is from the okay so there are certain metals okay there are certain metals and these certain metals when they absorb the cosmic rays it was observed that when they absorb the absorb the cosmic rays and basically a electron and nucleus both are rejected as yes, and so this is actually experimentally uh, uh, observed also by the anderson later on okay but uh, uh, the pair production explanation was actually given by the uh, dirac okay the dirac actually uh, i told you in the first class there is a equation Uh, which was given by the like a schrodinger wave equation we have a dirac equation which actually taken care uh, which actually is based on the not only on the wave equation but also that has the property of uh, that has utilized the relativistic theory of einstein okay so uh, the relativistic equation we, what we call it as the uh, dirac equation okay and the dirac theory uh, predicted this pair production which was later on actually uh, uh, experimentally observed by uh, the anderson in the 1932 i suppose yeah so this dirac equation came up in 1928 but uh, in the year uh, 1932 or so anderson actually observed the pair production okay so how this is happening so this uh, this is happening because the photon Uh, is interacting with the nucleus and it is producing an electron and proton. Okay, like uh, cosmic rays and X-rays. Uh, cosmic rays. Uh, this expression expression was actually uh, the experiment was done by Anderson using the cosmic rays, which composed of a lot of X-rays are there in the space, celestial space. We have done this experiment where when the light is actually exposed to certain metal uh, this thing. and they interact with the metals and then the electron and proton both, both are basically uh, ejected so now the point in this regard is that how to explain this 
a photon okay it is a it is basically a, the electromagnetic radiation which is considered the wave but we are observing out of which electron and positron which we know as a particles right so none of the classical physics explain this phenomena of pair production there is no phenomena that explain this concept but no physics none of the physics laws actually explain this pair production right the photon is absorbed by something and then it is uh, giving to a pair of particles so that means what basically the radiation itself is a composed of the uh, <coughs> particle the wave itself the electromagnetic radiation composed of uh, particles and then depending upon uh, the situation it exhibits a certain property okay so that's all it is uh, you can just go through the rest of the things maybe i will discuss uh, the uh, de broglie assumptions maybe in the next class and uh, briefly uh, de broglie and also the uh, the uncertainty i will explain then we can discuss the quantum quantum mechanics okay so i think by next class uh, mostly i will finish the uh, the introduction part and then we can proceed further if you have any doubt uh, you can quickly ask questions i shall answer about making the notes uh, so, no, no. Uh, should we uh, should we want to read whole the text and make the note according to our needs likewise we want to that all from your notes see i i i am giving a brief note i am not explaining each and everything right uh, basically i am trying to give the essence of the experiment how it is left right so now it is up to you how you would like to take up further okay if you, if i if my lecture is very much curious to you and if you want to really find are i have not seen this experiment or i do not know the in depth knowledge of this uh, particular thing you go through all the details okay you go through the details and make your own notes what is this experiment i gave you the story okay the derivation is is not i have not explained to you but it's not that i'm i'm not, i'm not saying that it is not important it is important since i have touched, touched those things you try to understand because this is a uh, place where you can understand little bit of physics which is also required okay don't think that i am a chemist yes chemist uh, that is that you are going to study mostly the chemistry lectures and all but this is where that you will get a chance to know little bit of mathematics as well as physics so whatever i am touching uh, based on my notes what are the slides what i am giving to you i have prepared something and then same thing i copied over there that is my understanding of the experiment okay and you can go through the text and then write your own notes that i will appreciate all of you okay sir thank you anjala okay, you sir. have anything hello sir i am actually going through the notes sir hmm first based on my lecture first you go through my material or lecture one by one uh. Okay, sir. Then after that, these experiments you can Google it. You can find also. You can read the first instant. You can look at what is the experiment about this experiment. You can look at the some YouTube videos also will be there. Just read uh -huh. and try to get what this experiment, how the conclusions are led to the quantum mechanics development. That only you try to know initially, and if it makes you more curious, and then you try to read something and make a note of it. Okay. 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 All right. If you have anything, you can post me and bye for uh, today, and I will catch up in the next week. Bye bye. Bye.